So good morning to all of you. And uh, today we'll be talking Did regarding you know, the yeah. clinical aspects. Uh, she's been reporting good. regarding the clinical aspects about the inducible beta lactamases and the how in vivo resistance gets developed. So uh, basically, in the entire the AST and antimicrobials is a huge, huge, vast topic. Uh, but uh, I'm just trying to present whatever experience that I have shared with the past uh, some years. And this exercise is primarily to strengthen the diagnostic practices. So what are beta lactamases and what are BLBLI combinations basically? So we know that enzymes, uh, enzymes they are either constitutively, constitutively expressed or they get induced in the presence of an inducer. So what does an enzyme do? Basically it acts upon a substrate and they uh, attach to an active site and certain bonds are formed and then the uh, uh, substrate is broken down into a product. So in this case, the substrate is the antibiotics and the enzyme are the beta lactamases in this case. So this is a, uh, I would say this is my pathognomonic slide. And we have seen that uh, the evidence of beta lactamases then followed by cephalosporinases, then ESBL, which are at least you know, around 80% or so in some of the settings, like my previous hospital, there were like 85 to 90% were ESBLs, followed by the ANSI beta lactamases, then the Clegula pneumonia carpenomases, which are primarily seen in the US and in the Western countries, they are not much of a problem in India. Then the oxa beta lactamases, then the metallobeta lactamases, which comprise of the New Delhi metallobeta lactamases, and of course, coming to cholesterol resistance. So basically the antimicrobial prescribing and the you know, prescription and the usage and malpractices, they are primarily causing this uh, emergence of resistance. And this is the point where the BLBLI, they start failing, where your peptazo and uh, you know, depending on the ex amount of expression of the enzyme, they start failing at this particular point. So after that, none of the BLBLI combinations, they are able to, we can use them. So basically, if you can know what is the exact mechanism or resistance, only then you can have, you can target the proper, proper uh, site of the, you know, on the bacteria. So basically, they are uh, very uh, variegated enzymes, variegated in the sense that they have got a huge variety like FOX, LAT, MOX, they have numerous number of uh, AMC beta lactamases which are present and they have got a clinical significance. And they are uh, now they create normally resistance to third generation cephalosporin, cefoxetin, and usually the BLBL combinations. But there is no uniform criteria which has been uh, you know demonstrated anywhere in CLSI or UCAS, and they are still not able to pinpoint as to how to diagnose exactly uh, the BLBL uh, sorry the AMC beta lactamases. There are certain footnotes in CLSI regarding uh, certain criteria in UCAS also but they don't have specific criteria one, like they used to have once for ESBLs. <clears throat> they do produce a lot of uh, resistance in uh, carbonyms depending on the amount of derepression or which phase of derepression they, uh, de they are under. So it can create carbon resistance but first the resistance arises with, with the ertapenem followed by meropenem and then amipenem. Normally they are not easily recognizable because you know uh, their substrate profile is very very variable so and depending on what condition what situation of expression they are under so that also depends so by convention it is said that normally all cefoxate resistance enterobacterials are usually AMC positive but there are many exceptions like in cases of hapnia alveoli there are other uh, uh, AMC beta lactamases which might be cefoxate susceptible so basically on the basis of most of the published study, any isolate of enterobacterial which is resistant to any third generation cephalosporin can or might harbor amc beta lactamases with or without. So their substrate profile, what are the kind of resistance patterns they are producing, their numerous resistance patterns if you recognize what you call as an interpretive reading, you can actually find out that what is the likely uh, uh, resistance mechanism. So we know the central dogma of molecular genetics is that RNA is single standard and DNA are double standard. So normally it is always the formation of RNA, sorry DNA to RNA followed by RNA to protein. That is your transcription and translation. That is your beta lactamase enzyme. But what happens here is that bacteria are normally very very smart. 
they don't normally express uh, when it is not required they don't normally express so now what happens is that under usual conditions under the naive state the amc beta lactamase enzyme is under a repressor gene so it is under a repressor gene but once it starts gets exposing to the antibiotics and these antibiotics they start breaking down certain cell wall proteins and these cell wall proteins they cause the derepression of the antibiotic uh, of the amc beta lactamase and the amc gets activated to in, in there are two stages actually the initial stage is the initial derepression then there is a permanent derepression is there in the first phase the induction happens there is partial production of amc beta lactamase in this case the last case there is complete and final expression and does not get reverted back to its original state usually so that is a permanent amc derepression is normally created so just the presence of this, just the presence of gene does not mean that it, it is going to express the enzyme the gene may be present it depends on you what kind of antibiotics you are using what is the mode of detection what is the mode by which you are giving the antibiotic what is the antibiotic which is being given that will express the gene normally the gene won't get expressed because like i said bacteria won't unnecessarily create uh, so much of you know protein synthesis just uh, in the absence of a stimulation so location actually of these uh, enzymes is also very very important because it depends where the location is so by by default the 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 chromosomes are actually two major kinds one is one is already integrated inside the chromosome the others are present in the plasmid so chromosome is very very long it's around 1.5 mm long that's 500 times the length of the entire bacterial cell and the plasmid uh, uh, is very, very small so expression of the protein is much easier if the gene is spread on the plasmid so that plasmid is also spread from the bugs to bugs so the chromosomal amc beta lactamases which are short form or for c amc are found in bugs which are normally causing hospital acquired infections and the plasmid mediated amc is found in bugs which are causing the community infections so the expression depends on whether it is spread on the chromosome or spread on the plasmid plasmid is normally constitutively expressed chromosome it takes time for induction to be present so what are the common gram negative bacteria which are expressing the chromosomal amc beta lactamase because these are the ones which are dangerous because initially we might look at them as you know they are very uh, casual looking bugs they are susceptible to everything normally many of the people don't even put up uh, phosphate discs so bugs like enterobacter cloaki complex klebsiella enter that was earlier the uh, enterobacter aerogenes enterobacter frondii not cozy only frondii sericea marcescens providentia stud stud stuartii morganella morganii these are the ones which are commonly called as the escpm group of organisms and of course e coli also does have got a chromosomal amc beta lactamase but it is poorly inducible shigella yersinia they are all poorly inducible they are present on the chromosome but they don't get induced but in these case they can get induced depending on what kind of substrate they are exposed to so as i just want to shortly state this acidobacter also has got as a non inducible amc beta lactamase e coli yersinia shigella they all have got while the other ones the dangerous ones are citrobacter and enterobacter morganella providentia pseudomonas and sericea these are the ones which have got the inducible amc beta lactamases and they are the reasons why this is the reason why the uh, there is uh, emergence of resistance so what are derepressed mutants derepressed mutants are normally present in a Uh, a quantity of approximately 1 in 10 power 5 or 1 in 10 power 7 uh, colony forming units in in a particular uh, inoculum of the total bacterial population and they can be detected as early as 24 hours after starting therapy because it has been known it has been known and we have proved it also we seen it also in vitro also in vivo also and in clinical studies clinical case reports also that the moment you start an antibiotic 24 hours to 3 days to 4 days later immediately the break points totally they change the uh, uh, what we call as the you know uh, the what we call as the mutation selection window a mutation selection window means it is uh, if the if the break point mic for the particular bug is let's say one so it is not that you have to uh, use an antibiotic which has a mic of one or two you have to use an mic which is much higher four to five times higher so that that point of the mic the concentration when it is two so that is the point where the mutant starts uh, arising and those mutants have got slightly higher mrcs of 2 or maybe 3 or 3.5 4 so even if you use an antibody which achieves a higher concentration in the in the blood so those 
uh, and those antibodies can take care of these mutants which are developing during in the mutation selection windows. So there are antibodies which can be inducers uh, and uh, they are the bile substrates like the first and second generation cephalosporins, cephoxidine and cephotitan. Clavulinic acid strongly induces arm cvitilatomases, the chromosomal arm cvitilatomases, we should not use clavulinic acid as far as possible and there are strong inducers but which are very poor substrates like the your carpenums. <coughs> then we have got weak inducers and labile substrates like the uridopenicillin, third generation cephalosporins, astronauts. They should not be used if proven to be if, if proven to be an AMC bug. So this is a classical picture of what an inducible AMC would normally look like. This is a very uh, classical picture in the sense that you will see that it is appearing to be apenem susceptible, neuropenem susceptible and it is showing resistance to third your BLPLA combination like Pictazo and amp Ampicillobactam. So I said that AMC beta lactamases are over, they are the inhibitor resistant beta lactamases. They are able to overcome the inhibitory capacity of the beta lactamase inhibitors like Tazobactam and Sulbactam. And even uh, and clavulinic clav acid itself is a strong inducer of AMC beta lactamases. Forget inhibiting AMC, it induces AMC beta lactamases as you can see in this picture over here. Cephotaxime has got some zone, but Cephotaxime clav does not have any zone. Yesterday we saw a picture in Pseudomonas aeruginosa. He had accidentally put up the P2 panel in which we had C4 exam. C4 exam did have a zone, but C4 exam clav that we put for ESB detection did not have any zone because of the induction like this. <coughs> so these are the inducible AMC beta lactamase classical picture, and this is cephoxidin also is resistant. So you see, it might be susceptible to the carpenems, resistant to the BLB like combinations, resistant to the cephoxidin, and of course there is going to be an induction caused by APNM in C4 exam. You can see there is a flattening of the zone in uh, cephotaxime disc and therefore you can see that they are APNM urban susceptible, they are classically cephotaxime resistant, resistant BLPLA combinations, they have got an auto destructive combination of cephotaxime clav. So clav is basically suicidal for the third generation cephalosporins. Clav I think should be a banned drug, it should not be used, clav is causing, is causing so much of resistance overall. And you can see there are certain synergies present because of probably uh, concomitant presence of an ESB, as you can see, there is synergy over here, there is synergy over here between peptazo and cephotaxime, also is there. So, this is probably an AMC ESBL co producer. So, these are just the arrows to show what the changes which are there. Now, what are the basic differences between ESBL and AMC beta lactamase? Because they have got a similar substrate profile of breaking down the third generation cephalosporins. ESBLs uh, have got separate enzymes for separate substrate and therefore in 2010, after 2010 CSI stopped extrapolating that you know if it is resistant, they used to have 5 set of antibiotics, cephotaxime, ceftriaxone, ceftazidine, cephotoxime and astronam. 5 antibiotics were there which have kept as screening drugs to see for the presence of ESBLs. Overall past 10 12 years all this thing has now faded off, we know that most common ESBLs which are present are the CTXM enzyme for which the common substrates are cephotaxime and ceftriaxone. So therefore, that's a classical substrate profile for ESBL, whereas for AMC, you are, we have got cephalosporins, cephamycin, cephoxidin, cephotitan, and cephmetazole. And they are, ESBL is normally present in plasmids, they can be present both the ways. Plasmids or chromosomes, there is no induction which is there, they are constitutively produced. And they can be inhibited by classical BLBLA combinations like tazobactam or ampicillobactam or clav, whereas these cannot be inhibited. So the confusion comes whenever both are present together. That is the time when the confusion arises. So there are multiple ways of developing how uh, keep on ranting the same thing again and again. There is a particular way of placement of the discs because the way that you place the discs on the plate, you can find out what is the most likely resistance mechanism. Like for example, in this case, you can see APN is placed in the center. Cephotaxime, Peptazo, Cipro, Nitrofrontal, Chlorophenicol, and Amikacin has been kept over here, so it is showing a synergy between Piptazo and Cephotaxime. Again, there you can see synergies are present between Astronam and Piptazo and Cephotaxime is there. Then, in Pseudomonas you can see that induction is being there, that is present because of APNM causing induction in Cephoporin, Salbactam and Cephotaxime. So, there is a particular pattern that you need to follow in your plates. So, if you see synergy, it is definitely ESBL. If you see dezoning, it is most likely a chromosomal. AMC beta lactamase. So once upon a time, like I said, even now we say that you know, if it is a zone size of uh, the third genesis cephalosporin and its corresponding class, this 
I've got a zone uh, uh, diameter of more than 5 mm difference is there. So normally it's considered to be AMC, uh, sorry, ESBL. But what if the third generation cephalosporin and the third gen clav diameter is less than 5 mm? What happens then? What if it's both the diameter the same or like I showed you, what if the diameter is different? Like, so you have to look at the therapeutic, uh, therapeutic uh, bl bell combination like represent tazobartam, ampicelbartam, cephalosporin, if they are susceptible, it is possibly an ESBL. If they are resistant, it is possibly an AMC beta atomase. So this will give you a picture. Like for example, in this case, you can see <coughs> imipenem is the inducer. It is causing a flattening of the zone in ciprotaxine. Piperacillin tazobartam is resistant because it is an inhibitor resistant beta atomase. And if you see ciprotaxime and ciprotaxime clav, clav again, it is suicidal for ciprotaxime and it is causing a total reduction. There is no zone over here. Ciprotaxime still has got some zone and neuropenem is susceptible and ertapenem because I said ertapenem is gets uh, the first one to die off among the carapenem so it is a partially uh, derepressed strain so ertapenem itself being the inducer is killing itself on its own because carapenems are good inducers among which apenem is the best inducer and ertapenem is the first carapenem to get hydrolyzed so ertapenem has got a reduced zone as compared to imipenem and meropenem so the basic rules uh, treatment rules uh, for dealing with the, uh, the chromosomal amsterdam beta lactamases that you must know what are the bugs that you uh, are likely to uh, encounter uh, in Trovator cloicae, Klebsiella eugenii, Citrovator frondii. Uh, they are considered to be the class 1 or the grade A bugs which uh, are uh, uh, producing amsterdam beta lactamases, the chromosomal amsterdam beta lactamases. Then we have Seracea and Morganella. And uh, uh, selection is like if you use cifepime or cifepirum, you are least likely to uh, develop uh, 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 induction of the AMC beta lactamases. If third generation cephalosporin is used as a monotherapy, then you have to repeat the cultures because the resistance is definitely going to develop, especially if you are using cifotaxime and cifota, uh, sorry, cifotaxime or cifotaxime. And tripicillin tazobactam uh, is an effective option against morganella as well as for protease options. So, that the one there is one point of contention is that in vitro susceptible to cefoxetin, ceftriaxone, and ceftarin do not give us monotherapy and do not even combine with amino glycosides. Right? Combination of third generation cephalosporins and fluoroquinolones is not considered to be a very good option. Same goes for third generation cephalosporins and uh, amino glycosides also, if we think that if you we can treat these bugs, even then it is not likely to uh, <clears throat> produce any kind of changes uh, favorable for the patient. So, <clears throat> now when to suspect and how to recognize RC beta lactamases that in vitro susceptibility will, may not correlate with the clinical efficacy. There is always emergence of resistance, mutants during the treatment. Resistance to any third generation phylosporin and resistance to BLBLA combinations is classical of AMC phenotype masking the ESBL because the, the umbrella of AMC is much wider as compared to the ESBLs. So if it is a third generation, resistance is there and uh, it could be both of them because it could be AMC or as well as ESBL. But there are certain rare instances where ESBL can also mask the activity of the AMC beta lactamases. So it is not a, it's, it's not a general rule. Like for example, the ACC type which I said is found in Hafnia alvia. It is see you can see it's the boxing is susceptible is there. So you can miss uh, AMC beta lactamases if you are not careful enough to no thing. Cefoxin MIC of more than 8 mg or resistance to septaridine uh, and or cefotaxime indicates a plasma immediate AMC. Cefepine susceptible with resistance to septaridine or cefotaxime. Cefotaxime is also is indicative of presence of a AMC beta lactamase. So you should always, the clinician should always ask about the susceptibility to cefoxidin in the intravitreals or the intravitreal C group of uh, uh, gram negatives. And uh, you can always see because the plasmid BDMCs are also carrying resistance genes to other uh, cross resistance also present. So resistance to other drugs like amino glycoside and fluoroquinolones is also seen in classically in case of the plasmid mated DMC beta lactamases. <clears throat> and of course, with the you can see the D zoning. So if you're getting an and let's say if you're getting an intravator uh, isolate uh, in your this thing, it could be any of these kind. It could be wild type, it could be AMC, it could be, it could be ESBL, KPC, NDM, OXA. So this particular intravator that you're isolating could have any of these types. 
बट एंट्रोवाइटर आर इंट्रेंसिकली रेजिस्टेंट टू एम्पेसिलम क्लेप्सिला इज इंट्रेंसिकली रेजिस्टेंट टू एम्पेसिलम सो दैट इज वाई इन द वाइट टाइप आइसोलेट यू फाइंड एम्पेसिलम इज रेजिस्टेंट बट इफ यू गेट एन एम्सिमिकल एक्टमेज देन व्हाट हैपेंस इज सिफॉक्सिन मे बी ससेप्टेबल सिफॉक्सिन मे बी रेजिस्टेंट बट यूजुअली इट इज रेजिस्टेंट बट फॉर सर्टेन रेयर केसेस सिफॉक्सिन ससेप्टिबिलिटी माइट बी देयर सो सिफॉक्सिन यस इट इज वेरी सेंसिटिव टेस्ट Uh, for induction of amsi beta lactamase but it is not specific i tell you about that later on so you'll see that fipronil dazolactam could be susceptible or resistant ciprazone definitely becomes resistant and again it depends on what is the level of repression or derepression or expression of the amsi beta lactamase gene but what level it is getting expressed and of course this is the esbl phenotype the kbc ndm and the oxa phenotypes of brand so different phenotypes will have this is what we call as a interpreted reading so basis on the basis of what pattern they are producing you can very well interpret what is the most likely resistance mechanism so like i said that it could be in a derepressed state it could be in a <clears throat> so what we normally do is we what i have done is that i try try to put a epinephrine disc in the center and cefotaxime cefotaxime zone size have to be compared uh, ESB and like I said, ESB and AMC co-producers are the major concern because they often produce a lot of confusion. And you always have to put up a chloramphenicol test for CRE because chloramphenicol produces a good in vitro response for the MDLs. This is one of the one of the diagnostic tips that I have put up put up on LinkedIn that why we must we must put up some oxygen test always in all on susceptible intermediates member because if we are not putting up, like for example. If I don't put a suboxone in over here, what will happen is there is no suboxone. Now you see the cefotaxime, cefotaxime class, ampicillin, chloramphenicol, lactam, tobramycin. Now there is no and nitrilamycin. Now there is no suboxone. You say okay, cefotaxime is there, cefotaxime class more than five mm. There is ESBL. You will just report the ESBL. You will miss the AMC because you have not put up the suboxone disc. So that's why suboxone disc must be put up. So therefore you have to. It, 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 this, this is what is what we call as an interpretive reading. So. uh you cefotaxime so disc epinephrine disc in the center cefotaxime cefotaxime class these are different group of uh, drugs that you must put up for your ast now this is a very interesting case that we published in my previous institute we got uh, um from the uh you can what do you call it uh, the colostomy side on the colostomy side there was uh, first was draining and uh, the pediatric surgeon they sent the pus aspirate From the colostomy site, and that isolated intravitreal cloaky. Now, this was a 10-month-old child that isolated intravitreal cloaky, which was resistant to cefotaxime. Now, this is not a naive strain because the patient has already been given some antibiotic previously, preoperatively, or the previous previous place that he was coming to. So, this is some amount of partial derepression is there. There is resistance to cefotaxime, but there is and there is also resistance to fipronil dazolactam. So, AMC is already getting expressed. And it is also resistant to the BLBL combination. So this is a partially, or you can say partially derepressed, uh, derepressed, uh, derepressed strain. What happens is that it is still susceptible to the carbapenems. Now they started giving this patient amoxiclab. I asked the patient, they so they 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 gave them amoxiclab empirically, and then just after three days, that report was on twelfth March. This report is fifteenth March. Just after three days, it became resistant to your. carbapenems so that is what happens if you are not using the right antibiotic so this is what the case that we published in in igm recently so there is a typical 2 by 2 table of what are the good inducers what are the uh, poor inducers versus the good substrates and the poor substrates so the good inducers they are the worst treatment options good good, good inducers and good substrates they are the worst treatment options like all amino penicillins first generation cephalosporins cefotaxime cefotidan and clab with bilbil combinations they are good inducers they are good substrates so they should never be used ever on the contrary they are poor inducers with the poor substrate like cefpyromin cefipine they don't got any induction they don't uh, they are not even the substrate so they can be good treatment options and recently 2021 the guidelines that were released by idas they have also recommended cefipine as a drug of choice for amc producers especially the cefipine mic lesion 2 <coughs> So this is another example of a derepressed mutant. This is also intermediate cloaky. It is showing uh, susceptibility to fipronil dazolactam. 
it is showing susceptibility to jet devices. So what we have done over here is that kindly uh, use piperacillin and tazobactam in prolonged extension of not less than 3 hours with high dose of OD jet devices. So why? Why not uh, give any carbonyls? Because I said carbonyls can be inducible. So we have not, we have, if you see, there are no carbonyls are not reported. Carbonyls we not reported. We have put up, but we have not reported. We entered in our unit, but we did not report it. It is even susceptible to uh, cotram oxal. But then this is a, this is a blood isolate, right? Mm -hmm. For blood isolates, you will not get any oral drugs like this. For all blood isolates, all CS infections, they are serious infections. You have to straight away go in for parenteral therapy. Don't go in for oral therapy. So this being a blood isolate, you have gone in for a, you advise this kind of treatment. So that is the kind of report that goes the, from, from my previous institute. So we have, see, we have put stars over here, this colostin, we have tested for it by, see, uh, by uh, uh, colostin broad disclusion method, but we not reported it. we have not reported it. we have not reported So we just put peptazo as bold and the therapeutic uh, index or based on the therapeutic efficacy or the MIC quotient based treatment profile, we have recommended Piptazo and Gentamicin for this particular case. <clears throat> so, this is another case of intramitral cloaky, another, this is also blood isolate. Uh, this was susceptible to third generation cephalosporins and intermediate to cephoxidin. So, therefore, in this case, we have reported for cephipine in prolonged extension use can be given along with high dose Gentamicin. So, again, this is a blood isolate, it is always good to have a combination therapy and that to parenteral. So this 2 by 2 table I have already mentioned in my uh, previous uh, slide about uh, what are the good substrates, what are the poor substrates, what are the good inducers and what are the poor inducers. So these are the optimal treatment options. These may be attempted if the other options are not available. For example, if the cephipine Cif MIC is more than uh, 2, uh, it's, it's got a higher MIC of more than 2. So you can attempt treatment with meropenem, you can attempt treatment with pepsin and tazobactam, but again, there is a certain way to handle the PKPD of these drugs before you start. So, so you have to, like, if the, especially when the certified MIC is higher, you have to be very careful what drug to use. Now, basic understanding of the drug, drug and drug above combinations on the plates. Now, how templates can be designed? These are, I can say, these are my copyrighted templates which are designed for the AMC beta lactamases where you can use routine drugs, routine protocols and the placement of discs become very crucial and observing a drug and drug and drug bug combinations can be observed and of course f MIC can be seen. But for example, this is the APNM induction plate where the APNM is being kept in the center surrounded by pepicillin, tazobactam, cephotaxin, cephotaxin clad, arsenal, cephoxin, cephotaxin. That is one place, that is one way of doing it. The other way is to use a Cephoxidin induction plate, like you keep a cephoxidin in the center where cephoxidin will induce and it will also be the substrate also. So it will be inducing. Then third is a cloxicillin inhibition uh, plate where uh, uh, APM is kept in the center surrounded by ampicillin, ampiclox, cephoxidin, cephoxidin clox, amoxiclab clox and amoxiclab. And then we have got a PBA inhibition plate or the phenylboronic inhibition plate. So there are two induction plates and there are two inhibition plates. So induction and innovation, there is a different uh, you know, ways of uh, testing how to do. Like in this one we have got APNM, Pepicillin Tazobactam, Peptazo PBA, AMP, AMP Vinyl Boronic Acid, Cephotaxin, Cephotaxin Boronic Acid can be used for the innovation. This is the example of a APNM induction plate. This is also been put by me only. As you can see over here, this APNM is there, Cephoxidin, this is a combination actually for both the plates. APNM is there, cephoxidin is there, it is resistant and it is showing this flattening. You can see very clearly over here. This flattening is the induction of the caused by APNM. So, APNM is placed in the center and it causes the flattening as you can see very clearly. Like it is very commonly seen in cases of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. This is again <coughs> a cephoxidin induction plate for detection of the chromosomal or, or the inducible arm beta lactamases, where a cephoxidin is placed in the center and you can clearly see this flattening over here between cephotaxin, cephotaxin on all these plates. So, this is also intermittent cloaky, which is a nice strain, which is susceptible third generation cephalosporin, but if you don't put a cephoxidin in the center, you cannot see that kind of induction. So, this kind of basic, these are basic discs, all placed in different, different manners, you can have these kind of templates. <coughs> now, this is APNM and cephoxidin induction on the same plate, 
to show the chromosomal arm beta atom is where it's showing even in the center and you can see this flat thing happening over here very clearly and even say foxton can do this kind of induction over here in you can see that in the cyprotexan clav cyprotexan cyprotexan uh, and clavulic acid disc is there so even in cause this flattening in cyprotexan in cyprotexone and astronom even in cyprotexan clav disc and cyprotexan uh, cyprotexan causing the induction in the cyprotexan clav also <coughs> Now this is cloxacillin inhibition plate. Now this is these are the ones where uh, cloxacillin has been added separately. Now this is again intravitreal cloaky. It is intrinsically resistant to ampicillin, but if you this is intrinsically resistant to ampicillin, but the moment you add cloxacillin, cloxacillin inhibits the plasma beta beta activases and it causes a this is ampicillin AMP AMP10. So it causes an increase in the zone size. So phosphatin is resistant. The moment you add the, this star means the places where I have added. cloxacillin this this indicate where i said add cloxacillin cefoxidin is resistant the moment you add cloxacillin there is a widening of the zone is created amoxiclav is the zone size is small the moment you add a clav the cloxacillin the zone size it increases a lot so this is a cloxacillin inhibition plate <coughs> in case of phenyl boronic acid the phenyl boronic acid basically it is used for all the the inhibition of the beta lactamases which are the Uh, serine based beta lactamases like even kpc is also can be inhibited by the uh, by the phenyl boronic acid amc beta lactamases also a serine based uh, enzyme so as you can see if you have pepsin tetrabactam over here which is resistant the moment you add phenyl boronic acid the zone size increases same for amp and amp boronic acid cefotaxime cefotaxime boronic acid the zone size increases the moment you add a amc inhibitor now these are all routine curvoid distribution plates and you can interpret them accordingly this is also very classic example you can see this is also a d repressed strain it is still susceptible to apenem but it is resistant to meropenem cefepime ampicillin is showing some zone yes cefotaxime there is there is some zone there but clav again it is causing a induction so therefore uh, clav is suicidal for cefotaxime and you can see there is a <coughs> synergy between pepsin tetrabactam and cefotaxime also Same goes here also. Cefotaxime, there is some zone there. Cefotaxime clav, no zone present. So clavulinic acid is a very very suicidal <coughs> uh, uh, BLI combination uh, with the cefotaxime. Again, similar things. It's also AMC beta lactamases. Probably along with the ESBL because it's showing a synergy between the present as the bottom and cefotaxime. This synergy, as I said, synergy indicates ESBL de zoning or inhibition to the uh, the BL BLI combination normally or resistance to the Carbapenem shows so again you can see meropenem is resistant, apenem is susceptible. But again, this case this is a constitutively expressing AMC beta lactamase. This is not an inducible beta lactamase. This is a constitutively expressing beta lact AMC beta lactamase. Again, this is a combination of ESBL and AMC showing synergy over here. Again, meropenem is resistant, apenem is susceptible, AMC cell lactam also resistant. <coughs> Now. The AMC expression can happen at different different levels. You can have a you know a mild AMC producers, moderate, or a hyper AMC producers can be there. Normally, the hyper AMC producers they will also create resistance to the carbapenem group of drugs also. Now, what is happening is this part first plate is that as you can see, this got meropenem, apenem, ertapenem. Three carbapenems are there, and there is a pepsin tetrabactam placed in the center along with cefotaxime and cefotaxime clav. Now, if you see the zone compare zone size of cefotaxime, cefotaxime clav. Again, this is inducible AMC beta lactamase because clav over there has induced the beta lact AMC beta lactamase, and therefore the say the cefotaxime present on this disc gets hydrolyzed, and therefore when the zone diameter should be ideally bigger than the cefotaxime, it is actually smaller because of induction of the AMC beta lactamase. This is a mild. So if you see a moderate form, you can still see. Uh, cefotaxime zone is there cefotaxime clav zone is totally gone but it is still susceptible to apenem ertapenem meropenem and slightly reduced zone for cefotaxime tetrabactam and this case you can see it is resistant to ertapenem i said ertapenem goes out the first one the carbapenem followed by meropenem then apenem peptidase resistant this is this is still some zone there and it's totally gone so you can say that uh, hyper producers they will start hydrolyzing even carbapenems also <coughs> so whenever we get any ecpm kind of uh, organism from the blood 
you have to be very very cautious because there can be emergence of resistant third generation cephalosporins avoid all third generation cephalosporins regardless of in vitro susceptibility so this is not mentioned in your ucast or in clsi concomitant exposure to quinolones associated with a decrease associated with decrease risk of emergence of resistance so again there are confounding studies some studies they say that if you are combining with quinolones it might reduce if you have they combine with quinolones it may not reduce the emergence of resistance but if you don't have any choice but again quinolones recently two, two three years ago have been there's a, a red flag has been uh, flashed by cdc that they cause a uh, hypoglycemic coma so even quinolones should be avoided in sick, sick patients cefepifine that is the drug of choice the mic is less than 1 as per ucast rules so you can give cefepifine as an excellent infusion <coughs> ceftriaxone avibactam is a carbamate sparing option because avibactam it decreases the or it inhibits the activity of the amc beta lactamase i'll just tell you which are the newer bli which inhibit the activity of the amc beta lactamase you should avoid any clavulinic acid based combination please avoid clav in all cases of uh, any in fact any case of enterobacterial you should always avoid clav ask for cefepoxin susceptibility and avoid bli in the order of this selvactam you can give then tazobactam clav you should always avoid so i've cut off clav clav should never give other liable treatment options could be peptocin tazobactam cefepoxin selvactam or mifepristone or cefepifine so these are the other treatment options that you can give If the cefepifine MIC is there, so the, uh, this this take-home message is that if you are suspecting enterobacterials, <coughs> always supplement your automated IDST with a beta lactamase plate. Now I am I am of a very strong opinion that automation does not mean you just totally go with the with the manual systems. You should always have both the things in place because both the things they complement and supplement each other. Always place the AMPM disc in the center. Uh, of the routine hundred mm beta lactamase plate, surround them with alternative BLPLA combination like cefepifine, cefoxidine, cefotidine, cefotidine clab, peptazo, astronam, and ampli or ampicillin. Replicate the same plate with your quality control uh, plate of ATCC E. coli, and look for look for synergy, look for reduction, look for Z, uh, zone enhancement, look for dezoning. Induction is basically dezoning only, and If you are getting bugs like uh, enterobacter cloaki, cefepoxin fungi, Klebsiella aeruginis, then they are known. They are deemed uh, chromosomal AMC producers. If the cefepifine MIC is less than two, you can treat with cefepifine. If the cefepifine MIC is more than four, then you have to treat with mifepristone. Now this is the uh, cutoff for CLSI. Ucast says one, <clears throat> right? Because Again, I'll tell you why UCAS. UCAS does not give you any rules for AMC beta lactamase, but it says that they have kept their MIC breakpoints lower so that they are able to cover the uh, resistance mechanism. So, if it is one, so they are slightly on a on a safer side. So, this is the this is for this is recommended by IDSA. And now, any enterobacterial isolate which is resistant to a third generation phosphorin can harbor AMC with or without ESBL. So, both may be present. and you should always uh, for you should always have the correct identification it should not be that it's just a gram negative i don't know it's it's a cetobacter frondi or cetobacter cozy even that you have to be very sure what are the two difference between these two uh carbamate monotherapy can be given only with the meropenem maybe but that was extended infusion and uh, maybe you can give peptocin tazobactam cefepoxin and ampicillin again as extended infusion with ODI amikacin because amikacin has got a slightly better profile as compared to the other uh, BLI uh, amino glycosides i'll just uh, go through about what pseudomonas aeruginosa is all about that is also one organism with that is implicated as a uh, chromosomal amc beta lactamase producer and uh, this is something which i saw a long time back during my senior residency at sgpgi that even in the atcc 27853 strain of pseudomonas aeruginosa There was a flattening uh, present in cefotidine, minestrone, in the other you know uh, things like tikar clav also. There was present a the flattening was present. So I asked the professor over there, why is this happening? So he didn't have an answer because probably that time enough literature was not existing about what these beta lactamases are all about. So they don't have any ESBL with them. They don't need any ESBL. They have got a chromosomal AMC beta lactamase which makes them. intrinsically resistant to many of the third generation cephalosporins that's the reason why we don't give cefotidine cefotriaxone for pseudomonas because they themselves are good inducers and good substrates 
Septaldehyde itself is not a good inducer, it's not a good substrate, so it can be given for the susceptible strains. So, and it is <coughs> natural for APNM to induce dezoning in all anti pseudomonal uh, beta lactamases. Now, this is again a report of my previous ICU. This is a blood isolate from neonatal ICU, and uh, this is growing pseudomonas aeruginosa. And uh, we have put up these footnotes like it is intrinsically resistant to ampicillin moxicillin 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 verta. Quarter moxicillin, chlorophyll, called tricyclin, tetracyclin, cefotaxime, cefotaxime, and ampicillin. It is all intrinsically resistant and therefore it is a naturally AMC producing uh, isolate. So it is likely to develop resistance in vivo during treatment. So we can attempt the treatment in this case with septaridine and, and, and amikacin. And uh, septaridine has to be given as an extended infusion. So depending on what is a kind of uh, uh, therapeutic index, we can give that drug accordingly. So but uh, in this case also we can go in for septaridine. Uh, this is the other actually this is the other report. This is mixed up. <coughs> so this is also another case of pseudomonas cerebrosa again from neonatal ICU. Uh, same thing. This is a report of uh, Klebsiella erogenes that we isolated. Uh, we had two isolates, uh, if you remember, uh, of enterobacter uh, erogenes. Again, in this case also, we said that we uh, this is uh, enterobacter uh, erogenes slash Klebsiella erogenes, so it is likely to develop resistance during treatment. So therefore, you have to avoid drugs like clarinic acid-based combinations. You have to avoid drugs like imipenem. Avoid third-generation cephalosporins. So, like third gen cephalosporins will go, will show you good in vitro activity, but have got a significant risk of developing the resistance in vivo. So, therefore, in this case, we report only three antibiotics: one fluoroquinolone, one cefepime, and one gender one amine glycoside, all susceptible. In this case, also, we have kept the reporting as restricted: only cefepime, cefrofluoroquinolones, uh, uh, chlorophenicol, peptazo, and amikacin. In this case, so actually there are two organisms in this case. This is the first organism. So this was the slightly extended uh, antibiotics are given to cover the other other organism also. So regarding some frequently asked questions, what are the antibiotics which select the derepressed anti beta lactamases or the anti production? What are the ones? So whenever you are dealing with a naive, that means never exposed anti beta lactamase, what we are dealing right now in this institute where the population is still naive. To the uh, to the exposure of antibiotics, so in this case, cefepime is a drug of choice, especially the MIC listen to the antibiotics that create a derepressed state. That's that all clarinol acid based combinations, clar based combinations, even in third generation cephalosporins, they all create a derepressed state. Maximum resistance develop in Enterobacter cloicae and Klebsiella erogenes, followed by Cetrobacter and Sericea. Bloodstream isolates are likely to develop more resistance as compared to other other samples like you know past aspirates and all those things. So bloodstream isolate of enterobacter very dangerous. You have to be very very careful. Does the use of 50% tazobactam select the repressed mutants? No, it is very very rare. You can give represent tazobactam. It is a good substrate but a poor inducer. So if you don't have much options left and you still want to go with the BLPL combination, piptazol is a decent option, especially if the MIC is. Is less than two. So compared to, if you want, still want to go in for a <coughs> carbine sparing regimen, but then piptazol should not be used as a monotherapy. It has to be combined with something. So AMC monotherapy, you can go for meropenem alone. But when you when you're using piptazol, you have to combine it usually with a amino glycoside. So any newer BL uh, BLI combinations which have got activity, yes, like I said, septaldi maybe batam I mentioned, it has got. Even in really bad term, European and Bavar bad term. These are the ones which are the new combinations which are have got a good inhibition of the AMC beta lactamase. So even though yes, they are inhibitory resistant beta lactamase, but the newer generation of the BLI BLIs are uh, able to tackle the uh, AMC. So can cyclozine and tail bad term be used to treat an infection causing AMC producing uh, members from the enterobacterials? It is cyclozine and tail bad term is ideally. To be used for pseudomonas erogenosa, MDR pseudomonas erogenosa infections, and especially for the complicated intra-abdominal infections and complicated UTIs. So it has got modest activity against enterobacterials. You can use it, but not to be routinely used. You've got other options. So try and avoid septaldehyde, tazobactam. Can overproduction of AMC enzyme lead to carbon resistance? Yes, I mentioned. You have seen it also. AMC is normally they have got a low level hydrolytic activity against the carbonyms, but it is not enough to confer a 
total resistance unless there is excessive production of the uh, of the of the, of the enzyme so whenever there is excessive production of enzyme there are other mechanisms also get activated like the permeability changes that happens in the gram negatives and that affects the concentration of the arsenic in the periplasmic space and there is alteration of the porin channels and up regulation of the efflux from both the things happen and finally it can even become resistant to even many even which i just demonstrated in the previous case and the combination of increase amc concentrations and the reduced antibody concentrations can lead to carbon so increase enzyme and reduce concentration of the antibody because of the up regulation of the efflux forms and the porin proteins porin channels also what does clsi say about amc beta ratio is there is no formal <clears throat> separate testing method with clsi has recommended so they just say a one comment that has been continuing since few years is that enterobacterial klebsiella citrobacter and sericea may develop resistance during prolonged therapy with third generation spirosporins as a result of derepression of amc beta lactamases therefore the isolates are in that are intrinsically susceptible initially sorry, initially susceptible to third generation spirosporins are likely to become resistant within 3 to 4 days classical case i showed that they can become resistant even to the carbamazepines also and repeat testing is always warranted in such cases so whenever you getting an enterobacter always send a report that please retest 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 right so which are or uh, which are likely to uh, possess inducible amc beta lactam clsi does not recommend any changes in the ast like for example if it is saying its enterobacter proteic is coming and is showing uh, susceptible to c4 enzyme it does not say that so it has resistant so that extrapolation which was done by esbl that is not happening over here what about ea what about ucas what does ucas have to say You can say that they have already kept their breakpoints at a lower levels. MICs instead of two, they have kept as one. So that uh, have, they are able to cover all the resistance mechanisms. So therefore, they have not stated anything, but they have stated that cefoxidin is has got high sensitivity but low specificity because other mechanisms of resistance can also create cefoxidin resistance, and therefore it can show, like for example, uh, whenever there is there are cell wall cell wall changes. Like uh, you know, uh, so they can also create a cefoxidin resistance, and that can produce a false positivity. And there is no further guidance on how to handle the interpolation of AC results in AMC producing. So the labs have to develop their own guidelines. They have to create their own uh, messages and all those things, and provide a detailed guidance document. That it, it does. UCAS does provide a detailed guidance document as to how to test. So they do have a method that is on their website that tests that uh, tells you what are lab methods which have to be used for the detection of the plasmid mediated amc beta lactamases <clears throat> so these are the tests which are recommended by the uh, ucas and micro studies also present the uh, cloxacel cefoxidin synergy test or the amc e test the cdt test boronic acid inhibition or cloxacel inhibition or cefoxidin synergy so which i just showed you earlier so you can have all different combinations of substrates uh, inhibitor inhibitors or inducers all combined you can have multiple templates you can form to increase so you can have multiple templates you can create for the same isolate to improve upon the sensitivity and the specificity of the test for detection of amc beta lactamases so these are my references that thank you very much for your present kind attention thank you